Hi, this is Chris from Rottweiler Performance, and today I'm going to show you DynaJet's new product, the Power Commander 5, for the KTM Adventure 1190. Uh, we're going to keep this video short, uh, just to kind of give you a brief overview of, of where it sits in the bike, how it lays in, and how easy it is. Uh, so we're not going to show you how to remove the fuel tank. It's, it's quite easy to do, but uh, that's going to make the video a little bit longer. So we're going to keep it to basically the air box, uh, the bottom of the air box, and removing that, and how to lay the system in the bike. Uh, this looks to be about the simplest installation I think I've ever seen for a Power Commander 5, so we're, we're we're uh, pretty excited to see how this goes. One thing I'd like to note before we start is removing the airbox is very simple, but right underneath the airbox, right here, uh, is the SAS line. This is where the SAS draws uh, fresh air from the airbox. So you're going to have to get underneath here uh, with a set of pliers and uh, just remove this. Uh, pulling the airbox out from the top, you'll notice a little bit of resistance. So we're going to pull that off just like that. And then underneath uh, that, when you pull up the air box, you're going to find uh, the SAS valve is sitting on a rubber, uh, kind of a staked rubber uh, mount. And that, if you reach in there and just hold on to it, you can pull the top of the air box off uh, just like that. You can, you can see the, uh, the staked rubber part there in the background a little bit. Uh, so all you have to do is reach in uh, to get the bottom of the air box out. Uh, to mount the Power Commander 5. You just have to do those two things. You just saw how easy it was. That was the first time I even tried. So um, it can, uh, it's a little bit tricky if you don't know about it, but uh, now you do. Okay, just to give you an idea of uh, what we did underneath the airbox, this is an SAS system off of another bike. So uh, we're just using it uh, as an example to show you what's on the bottom uh, of the airbox. So the airbox sits in the bike like this and the SAS is kind of stuck to the bottom of it. So basically what you're doing is you've got these rubber pieces here. Uh, that are holding on to it. So when you move the clamp down, uh, you remove that and you just kind of pull this off and unplug this thing. So if, if you've uh, purchased one of our SAS kits, we're going to throw this in there real quick. If you're doing an SAS or a canisterectomy, now's the best time to do it. So if you bought a Power Commander 5 product and you're installing it, we would highly recommend that you uh, do one of the SAS removal kits at the same time. So if you want to remove all this stuff, there's no point in taking your fuel tank off and your airbox off twice. So uh, we would recommend to do that at the same time. And the other thing uh, we didn't mention because you couldn't see it from the camera angle is there was another little hose coming out of the airbox on the left hand side right here that is uh, it's just a drain hose for anything that gets in the airbox and it's plugged on the bottom uh, left hand side of the bike so uh, there's an, one more little thing it just kind of pulls right off and the whole bottom of the airbox will just pull right out after that and at this point you're basically ready to install your entire power commander 5. Okay, the next part of this, we've left this uh, on the bike. You don't need to take this off to do the Power Commander 5 uh, install. You can just leave this on the bike. You run the harness around it, but uh, we're going to remove it just uh, so you can get a better view from the camera. Okay, now that we've got the lower air box off, uh, which is very easy to do, uh, we're going to basically lay the system in there. And the Power Commander 5 unit just sits in the tail just like this, so you're going to have to find uh, uh, you know, a nice little happy place for it um, that you're happy with. It comes with some Velcro and some, uh, some various other uh, methods of attachment. But this basically lives in the back, and then moving forward on the harness, you've got a ground lug that you're gonna plug into the, uh, the, the battery right here, which is conveniently located. Um, and then moving forward, we've got a little wire here that we're gonna stake into the throttle position sensor wire, and we're gonna show you what color uh, that gets staked into. That's in the instructions as well. And uh, moving forward, we may wanna run the harness you know, underneath the larger wires to kind of protect it a little bit better, but there's plenty of wires running through here. There's plenty of room. And we're gonna basically run these up, and these are going to tap into the uh, fuel injector uh, plugs right here, they just tee in, and then we've got a uh, crank reference center here um, that plugs in. And we've also got a couple of O2 eliminator dongles that we're gonna plug in that it's all very simple. It's all uh, within this, this area right here. So there's not a whole lot of digging going on with this, uh, with this kit. So this is, this is a very simple install. Okay, now that we have the ground wire attached to the battery, uh, we're going to uh, tell you real quick, I would recommend that you put the spade connector, it already comes crimped on the harness, uh, it's, it's a round, round uh, lug style uh, connector, I would recommend you put it that hard against the battery and then the other lug terminals on top of it. That way when you're screwing it down and tightening it, uh, the, uh, the bolt isn't trying to turn the spade connector because uh, they're typically smaller and thinner than the stock lugs. Uh, and the head of the bolt when turning it can uh, uh, tend to, to try to grab it and turn it and bend it. So if you put it on the bottom against the battery and the stock ones on top of it, uh, that'll work much better because they're much thicker. The stock ones are much thicker. 
Okay, moving forward on the harness, uh, uh, Power Commander 5 supplies you this little light gray lead right here, and this lead is for the throttle position. And it taps into the harness in this orange yellow wire right here. Now, uh, DinoJet is giving you this uh, little device called a posi tap, and it's a very simple device that, that taps right into the wire. So, we're going to show you exactly how to do that right now. Okay, now that we've located our yellow and orange wire, uh, this comes off the bigger of the two plugs on the ECU. Uh, we're going to screw in the posi tap, and what it is, is they've supplied you with a little piece like this, and it's very simple. Uh, you're going to unscrew the gray part, and you're going to want to hook it around the wire, just like that. So the wire is, is between the slots, just like that. And then you take the, uh, the other end of it with the needle and you screw it in like this. And that is tapping into your throttle position wire. And now with the other end, you're going to want to attach this, this gray wire here that they supply you into the back end of the of the other uh, uh, pink end of it. And you basically are just going to reassemble this. And this, this kind of forces, uh, you want to kind of push it in there while you're doing this. And this will wrap the wire around the other two and this joins the two. And this is how the Power Commander uh, taps into your uh, throttle position. And this will tuck away quite nicely. Uh, right underneath there. You may want to run the wire underneath some of these wires, uh, these other wires down here. Okay, next we're going to move up to the fuel injectors and uh, you're going to want to reach in and unplug each one individually. There's a little button on the back you can depress. Um, and what we're going to do is these are basically going to tee in. Now, uh, the one with the orange wire on it, we're going to want on the front cylinder. So we're, right now, since we're working on the rear cylinder, which is this one, I'm going to find the other set. And these, very simple, just tee in like this. So you plug into that harness there, and then the one off the Power Commander harness will now plug into the rear cylinder fuel injector. So there's the rear. Now we're going to locate the front. And again, the front is the one with the orange wire right there. And we're going to do the same thing. Uh, when you're all done with that, you're going to want to basically tuck these down in here and you're going to want to zip tie them uh, possibly to the fuel line. Uh, this is the crank reference center. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so you're going to want to tuck these down and make sure they don't interfere uh, with, the, with the throttle linkage. That's very important. Okay, now that we have our uh, fuel injector wires uh, cleanly uh, zip tied down, uh, there's a little bulge in the air box right here that uh, clears all this stuff. Uh, we're going to locate our crank reference uh, sensor and that's that this blue plug right here and it's on the left hand side of the bike and we're going to do the same thing uh, we're just going to unplug this guy and uh, tie it into the power commander 5 system just like that and then once you're done we could uh, tuck these away as well and zip tie them uh, again to the uh, to the fuel line here Okay, the next step in the process, we're going to go uh, to the center of the bike in this wiring loom and we're going to dig out the, uh, uh, the O2 uh, sensor plug, which is right here in the center. Um, and it's got a black plug on the back side and it's got one gray wire, one black wire, and two white wires. And we're going to want to unplug this. Just pull up on the tab and pull it out. And you're going to want to get the uh, O2 block off plugs uh, from the Dino Jig kit and plug that in and then put that right back where it came from. Now, if you want to remove the, the stock O2s altogether, now they're not doing anything at all. Uh, they're just sitting there. Uh, elsewhere in our store, we have these uh, uh, block off um, 
uh, plugs if you want to remove the O2 uh, sensor. So, uh, so these, uh, the O2s on this bike are a little bit smaller than normal, so normal O2 bungs don't work. So we have these nice uh, smaller ones here that uh, you can just pull your O2s out and uh, block them off. Okay, the final step in the process is to locate the front cylinder O2 plug, and which is right here on the side, on the right side uh, of the uh, of the frame. Unplug that, and then plug in the supply DynoJet O2 optimizer, like this. And again, you can remove this and plug it, or you can just leave it on the frame, uh, and your installation is finished. Okay, now that we've completed the installation of the Power Commander 5 on the KTM Adventure 1190, we're ready to put everything back together. I would strongly recommend if you're doing one of our intakes or if you're removing the SAS or canister system, that you do all of this at the same time because you have to take the same amount of items out of the bike uh, to do uh, those things. So we would recommend doing the intake, the Power Commander 5, and the SAS um, all within the same build. Um, uh, this is probably the most straightforward installation I think I've, I've done on a Power Commander 5. It's very simple to remove the airbox on the spike. It's very simple to remove the tank, uh, obviously the seat, and uh, it's, it, it's, it's really a plug and play kind of situation. There's really no uh, laptop work you, you need to do. Uh, you just plug it in and go. Uh, the map that comes stock in the Power Commander 5 unit uh, for the KTM Adventure uh, 1190 is an optimized uh, kind of a combo map where it's a little bit of economy, a little bit of power. Um, uh, for stock conditions. They do have maps on their site um, that we'll have host on our site as well um, that are for, you know, like an Akrapovich exhaust and, and some other modifications to the bike. So uh, you can benefit from those maps as well. It's very simple to install them uh, with a USB cable that comes with the kit. Um, but um, that's really it for the install. Um, it's a very simple thing and now yeah, we're ready to put everything back together and, uh, and uh, ride the bike. So thanks for watching and uh, if you're interested uh, we'll be offering a lot of uh, support for these products um, uh, for all their peripherals. So we're going to be uh, uh, su supplying some quick shifter kits for these so you can maximize the quick shifters. Uh, and there's a lot of peripherals you can benefit from as well like the LCD screen, um, uh, auto tune which is like having a full time dyno tuner on the bike. Um, map switches where you can you can switch back and forth between two different maps at any time um, and a number of other features that are built into the Power Commander 5. So it's not just a unit that only allows you to alter the mapping. Uh, there's a lot of peripherals you can benefit from and it's a, it's, a, it's a really good deal. It's kind of a gift that keeps on giving. So we highly recommend these. Uh, we live by them and we thank you for watching uh, the install for the new Power Commander 5.